Before we get started in today's video, go help get rid of these inventories on these gaming mats. They make great mats. I'm not really selling this very well. <laughs> They're, they're smooth, they slide well, you can use them to like keep things protected even if you're not using it as a gaming mat. I like to build models on mine actually. Um, anyway, on, on, to, on to the video. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption that new stuff from iFixit. Wish you didn't grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. So every now and then I get these Amazon companies that will reach out to me and be like, hey, review our thing. I never, ever, ever review their thing. But sometimes it intrigues me to the point where I go buy their thing. And that's exactly what we got today. This is the version version triple screen 15.6 inch portable foldable, foldable monitor dual screen with vesa extender 1080p fhd ips for laptop pc 360 degree rotation kickstand for windows mac os or smartphone <sighs> what's ironic is it's clearly an odm or oem because here's a outline where the brand i guess would go and there's no branding anywhere on this and the last time i did that it turns out they were um ip thieving and the actual company that owned the ip was like hey they stole our stuff Anyway, as best as I can tell, this is an ODM, but for what or for who, I have no idea. So anyway, um, the idea behind this is that it's a, an easy way to add multiple monitors to your a laptop. But what I showed you in the past, in our previous videos, the ones that had like a, a spring-loaded clamp that would clamp onto the monitor of your laptop and then two screens that would fold out or slide out from either side, making it a quote-unquote tri-screen, by utilizing the laptop screen, which by the way, I think the name tri-screen is a little disingenuous considering the fact that it is not a tri-screen, it is a dual screen, which only becomes a tri-screen setup once you utilize the screen on your laptop or whatever. So I don't think that's very fair. But what this actually, I actually bought this for a reason because I'm gonna use this as our monitors for our podcast set. Because here's the problem with my current setup. It is a ViewSonic USB-C external monitor which our ASUS monitor took a crap. That's the one that was on the VESA arm. But the biggest issue was that with the way we sit for our podcast, I have the monitor facing me at a 45 degree angle and Phil can see my monitor if he leans his head over. Nick cannot because he's on the back side of it. But the idea about this being a folding display is if I fold it over on itself and then it's sitting like a tent and I just mirror the image or I, I duplicate the screen, then Nick can see exactly what I'm and Phil are seeing. So it has a purpose, but when it comes to like mobile editing stations and stuff, like our use case and what Phil would be dealing with whenever we'd go to Computex or a launch um, event somewhere, like we went to Vegas uh, or CES coming up, this is the perfect type of screen to basically be an accessory to a, just a powerful gaming laptop or a powerful editing laptop, which is much better than carrying around a full-blown desktop or whatever. And with how powerful laptops are now, the only issue with laptops is screen real estate, especially when you're editing. And considering these are IPS, means that they're gonna give us, hopefully, good image quality and good color rendering um, so that it just works as a, a nice setup, if you will. Anyway, let's go ahead and unbox it. Enough talking without actually taking it out. I don't know anything about it, to be honest, other than what I just read you through the description. I can tell you they appear to be the biggest version so far of any of the monitors we've taken a look at because the previous ones were 13 inch and then I think there was a 12 inch. So 15.6 will be nice. It's funny because they called it a dual monitor on the top side and then try screen on the bottom. <laughs> oh yeah, foldable dual monitors, portable tri screen. Foldable dual or portable tri. <laughs> It's actually a little weighty and like good, if, if weight equals quality, then that's a good sign because they're fairly weighty. So we have, oh, there's the brand right there. Verzen. Cool. Multiple connection for laptop. It's like, it just says take plug and plug in is basically what it says. One of the things I thought was intriguing though, is I saw on their Amazon page, they have this like post that both screens are folded open top to bottom and they're, they're hanging on this post. I don't know, I, I didn't look to see where the accessories are for that, but um, I like the fact that we do have 
or cables. I do like the fact that we have some mounting options here. This is probably the most hollow feeling power brick I have ever felt, if you wanna know the truth. It's gonna pop out. Obviously it'll be region specific. So I have a US version, so I've got a US plug. Obviously if you're in the UK or anywhere else I have a different type of plug, that's what you'll get. It is a USB-C, a USB-C, which obviously we know we're gonna be the good kind because this is how you carry the video signal. Another one. Now what I'm obviously seeing here is each monitor now, because I have a mini HDMI, which that kind of stinks, to a full-size HDMI, I'm a little concerned now because this now sounds like each monitor is independent of each other. I was hoping they would carry the signal through, but now it's looking like that's not gonna be the case. Looks like each monitor will act as an individual monitor. As long as it has a hub or something built in, otherwise we're in trouble because Oh, yeah, it does. It looks like it does have a hub. So it's got power, bulb monitors. Okay. <sighs> so on this side right here, we have, uh, looks like we have our menu adjustment, which are like little rocker knobs, which are kind of interesting. And we have our return button. One's for each, so it's two basic identical setups, although one has like what looks like a return switch, another one has what looks like a reset switch, which is kind of odd. But I'm assuming both of those are gonna be one for each monitor. And then, so our mini HDMI, that's a battery, so that's, that must be for power right there. Another HDMI. This has two squares on it, so I'm hoping that means a single input for both monitors. I'm really hoping, and then we have a power plug. There's actually no manual in the packaging anywhere. Um, the paper might have a QR code or something, but that's fine. Let's take a look at the thing. This, this is the whole reason of why I wanted it. So that I could fold it back like that, have a monitor facing me, a monitor that Nick can see, and then like even if you wanted to do like portrait mode, you could do that. It's its own stand technically. But I'm a little disappointed as there's no, oh wait, there's a kickstand right here. Bam. So you could do it like that. So you could have this like say next to your monitor, next to your laptop. So you'd have a top and bottom display and then your laptop next to it. It's its own kickstand. It's got its own power source and stuff. Awesome. This laptop should be able to also provide enough power through the other USB-C cable to power it. So let me get it all turned on and hopefully set up. All right, so setting it up was pretty easy. It took a second for the laptop to detect it. Initially it detected the, this monitor down here and that one just kept RGBing. But what I wanna demonstrate right now is when I plug it in, how fast it will, now that it's been set up, recognize what it is and go back to how I set it. There's that, there's that. Boom, boom, pretty quick. One thing I wanna point out too, if you are running the, the HDMI, then you have to run a cable individually to each monitor. However, if you are using USB-C, you can do uh, USB-C multiple, multiple um, display. Now you'll notice I'm using a 90 degree cable right here. This is for the power going to the power brick. This is my cable. The cable they provided is so short, being useful as a power plug if your laptop does not have multiple USB-C ports or a Thunderbolt port, which this one does not. It does not have multiples of it. A lot of modern laptops now have at least two USB-C since this only has one, unless I go to a hub and then from the hub out, which might then be a problem if it's having to supply power as well as dual monitor, which would not be ideal. Um, that's why you have the separate plug right here. So I just use my own 90 degree cable, which is long enough and it's going off the table and plugged in. I also feel like, they should have provided not only longer USB-Cs, but 90 degree cables. Cause look how this is like popping over onto my laptop right here. We have this sitting at a very awkward angle to, for filming purposes. So you don't see the, the reflection or the glare on the matte screens, but they are a matte screen, which is nice um, because we all know high reflection screens or glossy screens just in bright environments or a, a reflection nightmare. They're also 60 Hertz. So, they're not gonna be good gaming panels, although with the HDMI, you could use these with a battery, a big fat battery bank plugged in. You could have this plugged into say, um, well, I would assume to like your iPhone or your iPad or whatever with the USB-C or the lightning to USB-C output could probably work. I don't have one of those cables to try it. So if you were on like a car trip or something, you could plug this into like USB-C cigarette lighter or whatever, or not cigarette lighter, but power plug. And you could use this as a true mobile device. It's, it's not a high power 
uh, item. So you can run these off of like charger ports and stuff built into cars. Uh, or in this instance, as you can see right here, we're just using it as a multiple display. So I wanna try and take a little tour through the menu right now. Out of the box, the brightness is good. My complaint about the other tri-screen clip-ons that we had looked at was the brightness on them was really, really bad. Or if we were using multiple connections to plug it in, which we had to on the previous one, each monitor had its own cable, not a pass-through like this, you would get one monitor having a completely different brightness and saturation as another monitor. And in the previous videos, when we messed around with that, we could not get them to match, even though the settings and everything in Windows were identical for each panel. That could have been actually a variance between the panels too, to be honest. But because they're attached like this, they're identical panels that are being passed through, the signal is the same for both, so they look uniform. Um, but anyway, this I assume this is gonna be the top one right here. So this should be a flip switch. Yep, see how it's upside down? So now if we were to do this, right? Now it's facing the right way. <laughs> now we just have a camping tent of monitors sitting there. But that is a physical button. It's, there's no sort of accelerometer or anything in there to identify when it's flipped. And it's just the push of a button, pretty simple. Toggle switch right here. Yep, there's the brightness. We can really crank that guy. Although there's not a huge difference between, let's see, that was 100, it was at 60. Really the brightness range is from like one to 30. And then from 30 to 100 is like the same as one to 30. So you can see right now the source is set to multiple input right there. Um, if it was using its own type C to just this monitor, you'd see it. There's HDMI, there's the eye care mode, delay sleep. So it's gonna turn itself off if it doesn't see any settings. Um, we do have a couple different pre mode or preset modes on there. So you can do, obviously your brightness has a volume. Are these? These don't have speakers in them, do they? Why would there be a volume? I don't think the speakers are working right. Like, I honestly think they're, it's broken. <laughs> okay, welcome to the final video and conclusion of the Expanse PC build. Um, I told you guys oh in the God. last one that the next time you see it, it will be done. So that's good. It's like I'm watching a YouTube video through a walking uh, talkie. It's yeah, like, it's really bad. <laughs> I would never use the volume in these unless I was in a pinch and just needed to know like, is the sound output working? Sure, okay, pass that, leave it alone. Um, I wanna know what the other other modes look like here. So can you, damn, I keep wanting to go to this monitor, like they can have its own. Can you actually bring up both menus at the same time? Yes. Okay, you just have to push it and like hold it. So what does the other, what does gaming mode do? 3D surround, rotate, game mode, ultra HDR. But these are not HDR panels. So game mode just lifts the blacks and that's designed to make shadows less, you know, for, take away the ability for people to hide in shadows. That's all that does. Crosshair. Does it work? <laughs> it's not turning on any crosshairs. <laughs> Why is there an English slider? Wait. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> How much language do you want? Do you want more language or less language? Spiel modus. Okay, what is Ultra HR HDR? Oh, that's so bad. It just crunches it. <laughs> you think? Look at that. It boosts the saturation like crazy. And then it just, Actually, it looks like you just take the contrast and move the contrast to 100%. It didn't, it's not HDRing. So uh, anyway, there's just the color selection mode and then there's the exit. You need a bright colored stripe. The colors look good. They actually like really look this, good. Let me turn this down. My own, hearing my voice while I'm trying to talk is really distracting. But anyway, it actually looks pretty good because it's 60 FPS, you know, video playbacks gonna be fine. Our videos are in 30. But yeah, it, the color, the skin tones actually look Really good. Like Phil could totally use this as a playback monitor and have his real estate be nothing but the timeline if he wanted, or this one up here, right? So, I mean, he could arrange this however he wants. So in terms of viewing angle, because it's IPS, all the way up to the side is really, really good. But top and bottom, eh, it's not terrible. It's probably like a solid 170 degrees or so of viewable. Yeah, I feel like that above 50%, that brightness slider doesn't do a whole lot. But this is, this is cool. I mean, you just have to imagine like all the, you know, all this extra screen real estate. 
that would definitely come in handy. But like I said, we're going to be using this on the uh, RTFM set. But that's if that's if I can't remember if that's running a full size HDMI or what our connection type is, or if I even have a long enough cable now to connect it now that I think about it. I think that actually might be an HDMI. So this may not work for the way that I want it to, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, just kind of a short video to show you how well this actually worked out. The downside about this, because there is a downside to everything, is I paid 599 US dollars for this. I do think it's pretty expensive. Um, it's definitely more expensive than, look, I would not, I am not saying this would be a good setup to put on your desk and like use it full time just sitting there on your desk. Do you know why? Because you could buy two very nice 1440p panels that are 27 inches for less and have a ton of real estate and better resolution and better refresh rate for that particular use case. But anything that is designed for portability, anything that is designed for convenience carries that tax along with it. And clearly at 600 bucks, these carry that kind of fee. And you know what? That's about the same price too as what the, the slide out monitors were. <gasps> what if we were to have one of these with the slide out tri-monitor and then this setup? Wait, what if you slide the, attach the slide out on there? Nick, go get it. So we took the tri-mount thing and mounted it to the top of this mount and we thought to ourselves, quad mount. They call it quad desk. I, it's funny because this laptop is having a hell of a time rendering or playing back all these videos <laughs> through all these different connections and stuff. Um, but I, I mean, there's no other possible use case for this other than to watch, what, five J's Two Cents videos at the same time. What happens if I unmute it? Let's see. It, it, <laughs> Sure you guys are all shocked well, as I am, it's done. Yes, again. What is this is a random Phil voice. It's just what it sounds like in my brain at all times, guys. That's what it looks like in his brain. You know this is like $1,200 right here. Like, that's like a 4080 right there. Okay, I have to, I have to, I, I, I can't. Okay. Oh, couldn't tell which one was me. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's a very expensive solution, but I think this is what I was talking about, like how tiny these monitors are from XPEC. I, I think they should be bigger, honestly. The color is also not nearly as good on these as this is. So, which is funny because they're they're all IPS. Out of the box color on the um, Verzgeberg or whatever it was called. Verzen was <laughs> <laughs> the Verzen was a whole lot better. This is really awkward seeing all this. <laughs> So anyway, thanks for watching guys. The link's down below if this is anything that would interest you. We have a use for it. Maybe you do too. I paid for it. The brand didn't send it. In fact, I wanted to. I didn't respond to their email. I just went and bought it. And uh, there it is. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Uh,